He is Samuel the prophet. That old man in tattered rags is Samuel? He is the only man of whom Saul is afraid. <laughs> Your Majesty, the Prophet Samuel is coming into the court. Saul hath him as his counselor at court. And these are they the sons of Saul then? Jonathan, Ishvi, Ishbosheth. His sons. His sons. When I grew old, I made my sons judges. For I had judged Israel all the days of my life. But my sons would not walk in God's ways, but took bribes for prejudice, judgment. And then the elders of Israel came to me, and ye did say unto me, Give us a king to judge us, like all the nations. A king! Oh, and I prayed to the Lord, and he said, The people of Israel, have not rejected thee, but have rejected me, the Lord God. They have forsaken me and served other gods. So they do also unto thee, Samuel. Now therefore must they have a king to reign over them. Yea, so spake the Lord to me in the darkness of my heart. And I told his words to all of ye who asked to me a king, and I said to ye, This king will take your sons and appoint them for himself and his chariots, and he will set them to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war, and he will take your fields and your vineyards and give them to his servants. And ye shall all cry out on that day because of your king. But ye would not hear me. Nay, nay, he said to me, nay, but we will have a king like all the nations, a king to judge us and to fight our battles. The Lord told me in my ear, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him king over thy people Israel, that he shall save them out of the hands of the Philistines. Saul, when I saw thee, the Lord said unto me, Behold the man who shall reign over my people. Israel, thou art beloved of the Lord. We 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 honor Samuel, of course. But the last of the great judges of Israel hath not called out the whole court of the kingdom only to tell us the old story that all of us know so well. Saul, I will tell thee what thou dost not know. I will tell thee what the Lord said to me last night. <sighs> Leave us.
of Israel is departed, for the ark of God is taken. In all of my kingdom, Samuel, everyone is aware that the Ark of the Covenant is in the hands of the enemy. This was a needful sacrifice, not to be avoided in making our peace with the Philistines. Saul, when the Ark was taken from thee, the Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee on that day. Pay no heed to him, sire. Samuel is old beyond the years of wit. Old indeed. Near to death, Saul. Yet last night the word of the Lord came to me again. Leave us. Samuel. What said the Lord unto thee? The Lord said, It repenteth me that Saul is king. I, for he hath turned back from following me, and hath broken my commandments. Thus spake the Lord, and it grieved me, and I cried to the Lord all night. And when he answered me, he said, How long wilt thou mourn, Saul, seeing that I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Am I not king? Look with thine eyes, Samuel. Do I not sit here before thee on the throne of Israel? The Lord hath said, I have provided me a king. Another. Thou wert a goodly young man, Saul. There was not among all the children in Israel a goodlier person than thou. When thou wert little in thine own eyes, did I not make thee head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint thee to be king? Why then didst thou do evil with thy sacrifices? I have obeyed the laws. I have followed the ritual. Thou art a rebel in thine heart, Saul. Thou hast made an insurrection against God. Because thou hast rejected the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Samuel, if I have sinned, if I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, It is because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Samuel. Who is he? Who is that man who shall be king in Israel after me? The Lord said to me, Look not upon his height, for the Lord seeth not as men seeth, one pure in heart. Who is he? Ere I die, it hath been given to me to anoint one king who shall be chosen from Bethlehem. And the spirit of the Lord shall be upon him from that day forward. to thee with prophecies, but to bid thee farewell. The Lord hath departed from thee. An evil spirit hath made its home in thee. I shall come no more to thee, Saul, and nevertheless, I mourn for thee.
baik lah. <laughs> I've been awaiting the Aegla. The last born, does he please thee? Aye, he's beautiful. Make him walk. Oh, no, he's too little. Oh, come now, let's put him down. Oh, no, David, dost thou think he's grown enough for that? Now, now, see how he walks. Look, he goes to his mother. He's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> come, Aegla. Close thine eyes. Why? Now, David, no questions. Open them. Oh! Tis beautiful, Aegla. I'm in need of this. I thank thee. I must try it right away. Stay here and watch, Aegla. Aegla, why art thou sad now? I had a very bad dream. Oh, thou shouldst not think of it. Do not laugh, David. I dreamed that I had been taken far from me, very far. No one could ever separate us, beloved. I would that what thou sayest were true, but... Aegla, thou shouldst trust me. The same way that... The same way that I trust my sling. Watch this. If I do not smite that tree, thy bad dream will come true. No, wait! David, I'm so afraid. Why art thou afraid? I'm here with thee. frighten me sometimes, my love. But were thee otherwise, then perhaps I would not love thee as I do. Dost thou love me truly? Why dost thou ask, Miram? Please forgive me, Abner. Oftentimes I think that the advantages of courting a king's daughter might well be the only source of thy feeling. be easy to carry out our plans if thou art assailed by such doubts, Mirab. I love thee, Abner. I shall help thee till thou hast realized thine ambitions. Our ambitions. Nevertheless, twill be an arduous undertaking. But not for the captain of the host of Israel and for the daughter of Saul. There will be many hindrances. From thy brethren? They will not be difficult, I am certain, Abner. As for my father, be thou not fearful about him. The quick victory of the Philistines was indeed a terrible blow to him. I, with my great hosts, shall pass over the land of Saul. The land of Saul. <laughs> Our last victory over Israel was not complete because I did not slaughter that old imbecile. But our new invasion will be the end of Saul, and thou, Gothar, shall be the new king of Israel. Remember when old Saul was my captive? It was thee who asked me to spare his life. What did we keep as our spoil? The sacred ark. <laughs> but now, I want much more than that. Now I will have old Saul's blood. Each one of ye shall rule over the land ye will have conquered. Yea, as kings. As monarchs governing by our laws and rituals, ye shall command absolute obedience, receive tribute and pass judgment. Yet none of ye shall ever forget that I shall remain your king. The king of kings.
And these few days have passed so swiftly, David. My turn to plow will pass swiftly, too. And I will think of Eglon. Thou askest me that. I shall be without thee for so long. Art thou afraid? No, David, with thee, no. And in a storm, if I were not with thee? Then I should be afraid. But I should run to thee wherever I were. Truly? Aye, Eglon, truly. And if it were raining very of hard... Of course, even were it to be another flood. Thou art so kind to me, David. But, David, I must go now. Please, Agla, wait here. It rains still. I must not tarry. It is late. Don't go. is a vain one, Father. I know better what I do than one who attacks innocence and slays it without just cause. David, the Lord alone knows the scope of his own deeds on earth, and there remains naught else for us to do save yield to his will. But the death of my Aegla, this has destroyed my life, Father. God, by this deed, hath only destroyed thy mortal love, David but yet also rendered thy love more beautiful, for he makes of it a spiritual thing. Thou shalt love another time, thou shalt see, and then this will indeed comfort thee. It will comfort thee to think of Egla. Pardon me, Father. Tis of the Lord that thou shouldst ask pardon, not of me. And I pray to the Lord that he will give thee pardon. King, the agility and power of the Persian chariots have inspired this model. The chariot is drawn by four horses and is entirely armored with leather and bronze. Here and here. These lances will revolve like so many scythes and wreak havoc in the enemy infantry. Then thou thinkest we are invincible. Oh, there is no question, my lord. But the most powerful weapon that I know is an enormous man. One whom nature has endowed with inhuman strength. He is not like other men. He dwelleth in the caves beyond the town of Gath, refusing all commerce with the world. A human weapon that would sow fearsome panic in the enemy ranks. When he is unleashed, he cannot be stopped. And who is this man? His name is Goliath. Who is able to enroll such a monster in my ranks? A petty cut purse, a rascal named Kreth. He is waiting without, my lord. Show him in. Glory to thee, O king of the Philistines! Art thou, Cref? I, O flaming torch of my life, flaming paragon of all our virtues, thou art the most powerful, the most generous, and the most enviable Enough. of... Dost thou know Goliath? He's my friend. He does all that I bid him do. I want thee to bring him here. Bring him to the feast of the god Dagon. If he is, as my captain says, I shall give thee thy weight in gold. Oh, but I'm very heavy. As heavy as a camel. Out with him.
What dost thou want, Crab? <laughs> My brother and friend, friend and brother, at last I see thee again after all these months. Greetings to thee, Goliath, from my humble servant. How many times I have thought of thee. I have jealously cherished in my soul the recollection of thy affection for me. And now, at long last, I stand before thee. Now I can greet thee as the flaming paragon of my life, the only comfort of my tormented existence, the shining guide of my wretched fate. Oh, how can I thank thee, Goliath? But first of all, allow thy slave to pay tribute to thee with a tiny word of modest praise. Thou art invincible, Goliath. Everyone knows thou art the strongest man in the world. No, oh, no, man. no, no, please. No, don't kill me. Don't snuff out the wretched existence of thy only friend. Have I not always brought thee gold? And wait till thou seest the gold thou wilt get this time, enough to fill thy cave. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. <laughs> Thou wilt always be my best friend, Goliath. Uh, but I'd better tell thee the reason why I came here to see thee. King Ashdod sent me to see thee. He's mustering men for a great war. If thou agrees to fight for him, he will give thee all the gold thou desirest. Aye, and that's not all. There's more. There will also be the king's personal present to you. The most beautiful girls in Philistia. Say that thou wilt, Goliath, thou must. The most beautiful girls. <laughs>
Rock of Samson. Goliath, this stone has never been lifted aloft by one man since the distant days when Samson himself lifted it. This will be the true test of thy strength. said unto Samuel, Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons to save Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. This is Eliab, our firstborn son. The Lord said, Look not upon his height, nor his countenance, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. If the foreordained of the Lord is here, it could only be this one, Abinadab. Neither is he the one the Lord hath chosen. Nor hath he chosen any of these. Thou art certain that thou hast here all the children of Jesse? Blessed be thou, Samuel. Jesse, thou hast here all my children? David! All save my youngest son. Here he is, David. This is he. David, son of Jesse, the Lord hath appointed thee to be prince over his inheritance. Troubled in thy heart, David. I... It is true. I am troubled. It is written, who knows what is good for a man in his life, in all the days of his earthly life which he spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? Aye, we know that thou art a prophet, Samuel. That which is hath been already, and everything to be hath already been. And God seeketh again that which is passed away. It is also written, far better a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king. If thou speakest thus about me, Samuel, 
It is true, I am indeed poor, but wise. I shall come to thee again, for the Lord hath told me that I am to anoint thee king. <laughs> Saidst thou, King Samuel? Aye, Jesse. It is not the son of Saul, but your son David who shall be called by God to reign as king in Israel. But of the great events which await thee in the future, David, thou must not ever speak to any man. These things must all be kept secret. Forget it not. Go thy way. Eat thy bread with joy, for God hath already accepted thy works. The Spirit of the Lord shall be upon thee from this day forward. be done, O Lord. Thy servant hath left his loved ones that he may devote his life to serving his people Israel. May thy servant prove worthy of this mission with thy help. Trials await thee, David, but with thy faith thou shalt be strong. Thy departure will in days to come bring great joy to thy loved ones. In three days and nights thou shalt have reached Jerusalem. Shepherd, what sayest thou? <laughs> I, 
unyoke them quickly, give them to him. <laughs> Go, you are free. The royal slaves to set them free, Shepard. Oh, oh. <laughs> and let none of you touch them either. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you, kind lord. Thank you. Are ye the curse of your own people? Ye are a prey to godlessness, wickedness, and cowardice. Ye have trampled our laws underfoot and destroyed the foundations of our faith. Why? Why? The spirit of evil is in ye. But the spirit of evil is yet stronger in those who govern ye. Saul, Saul, thou art to blame for it. Thy corruption and perverted ways of living have made thee an evil man and have destroyed the good life in us. Rise against the false liberties which the tyrants of Israel have given to you. I say that ye will remain prisoners of your evil spirits if ye do not find in your hearts the strength to rebel and to redeem yourselves. Damned shall ye be that still remain in the bottomless chasm of sin. I come to arrest this man. This man is under our protection. Come, shepherd, into the house of God. Father, thou shouldst not fret too much over all this, nor exaggerate the importance of it. Exaggerate, thou sayest? Yes. A shepherd dares to accuse the king of Israel, and moreover receives the protection of our own high priest in the house of God. Are we to attach no importance to this? Have you all forgot? Have you all 
so soon forgot. The last prophecy of Samuel. For he did not speak of ye, my sons. He did not say of one of ye, not Ishvi, not Ishbosheth, not, not even Jonathan. Ere I die, he said. Ere I die, it will be given to me to anoint one king. Your Majesty, when Samuel anointed the king, the first to reign in Israel, he chose a warrior, a mighty man of arms. This David is a mere boy. I want him brought to me. But this is impossible, Father. He's in the priest's care. I, the high priest, protect him. Protect him from what? I want this David brought to me. How shall we do it, Father? By force? I have commanded you to do this. Sire, so leave this matter to me. No, if I leave it to thee, Abner, ere long thou shall leave him with all the other thieves and criminals to feed the vultures in the royal orchards. Now, first I must see him alive. I would talk with this shepherd. Bring him to me. Aye, Father may well be right. This young shepherd should have things of interest to tell us. What dost thou think, Abner? What I may think is not thy concern. I apologize for having put a question to the captain of our host. There is far too much stirring among the people now. I would not have this David so more trouble in the soul of thy father, already vexed by the prophecy of Samuel. So thou too fearest this David? I fear no man, Merab. But I am wroth at the evil spirit of these false prophets. Were I only king of Israel. And thou shalt be. Thou shalt sit on this throne one day. <laughs> I tell thee, it is no desire of mine to advocate rebellion against royal authority. I am not at odds with the laws of Israel, nor the rule of my king. Dost thou suggest, perhaps, that it is no longer permissible to speak one's own mind? By stirring up the people, thou hast gone against the supreme authority of Israel. I have seen vice and corruption rife everywhere. Wherefore, I said that which I said. The insolence of this shepherd is an affront to the court. Oh, I think not, Mirab. For hath not David made clear the reasons why he behaved the way he did? I believe that we should hear David further. Unless, of course, it doth displease ye. I would have an opinion on one matter from this wise shepherd. This is ridiculous. To seek the counsel of a shepherd, indeed, one might as well seek the judgment of the people. This wretched shepherd is not here to judge us, but to be judged. As one of the respected counselors of Israel, Benjamin of Gaba is fully entitled to speak here. So if it please thee, thou shalt put thy question to David. I thank thee, Princess Macau. There is one clause in the peace which we made with the Philistines, putting a limit on the making of weapons, and stating that only our officers and palace guards may bear arms. David, son of Jesse, what thinkest thou of these limitations? My prince, to my mind, there is but one way to solve that riddle. Tis shameful to ask a shepherd to solve riddles which concern only rulers. We will hear this, shepherd. Leave us. Leave us, I say. I believe in omens. There above our heads sits the bird of night. 
That bird is an evil omen. David of Bethlehem. <laughs> Majesty, the treaty limits the use of weapons to the officers of our host and guards of the palace. <laughs> it is true that only my officers and guards may bear weapons. So then? But the treaty has put no limit whatever on the number of officers and guards which thou mayest have. <laughs> <laughs> David, thou hast a sharp wit. I have heard much of thy sharp wit. Yet I cannot hate thee. Come. Come nearer to me. Come, David of Bethlehem. Drink. I am not thirsty, O King. Thou mayest choose either cup, and I will drink from the other. No, I will drink from both. They are not poisoned. I have sent out my servants to the markets and to the countryside. I have inquired about thee, David of Bethlehem. I hear thou art a wily hunter and of cunning hands for music. Wilt thou play for me, David? Wilt thou stay and sing my songs to make my spirit well again, David? I shall obey thee, O King. Thou shalt obey me. I. Thou shalt stay in my palace. Thou shalt remain with me, David of Bethlehem. Mm. My father waxes greater every day. We shall find a way to make him powerless ere long. I hope so, but I'm troubled most of all by the ways of my sister. Thinkest thou that Miko might cause us vexation? Were David to fall in love with her, yes. Oh, I have a watchful eye, Abner. A cursed shepherd. And now the people praise him to the skies. Whilst he remains at court, our plans will surely be in danger. For some days it's been clear to me what David covets. What is that? The throne of Israel, Mirab. Thou forgets the prophecy of Samuel. His spell is already on thy sister, Michal, and on thy brethren. Not on me! Not on me, Mirab! Calm thyself, Abner. Calm thyself. For thy apprehensions are excessive. Thou, Saul. Thou who wert the victorious hero of a hundred battles. Thou hast suffered thy first defeat. Why? Because thou art no longer the Saul of yesteryear, the Saul who was beloved of all the people of Israel, the Saul who was feared by his enemies, the Saul of whom my father Jesse so often spoke. O 
Oh Lord, help him. Forsake him not. And defer that day when he will no longer be king. Restore to him his wisdom and thy protection. I beg of thee. David! But what art thou doing all alone here in the throne room? Nothing, my princess. Nothing. I was seeking thee, David. My father awaited thee in his quarters. He is weary and would hear thy songs again. I shall go forth with princess. My name is Michal. I thank thee. Michal. I rejoice that thou hast made my father calmer in spirit. Thy sweet presence and thy counsel are a very great help to him. Were it not that it had made its way into the minds of the wise, my counsel would be gone on the wings of the wind. Very true, but thou wert also able to do more. Thou hast made thy way into our hearts. When I said the wise, the one I truly had in mind was thee, Miko. Go, David. My father awaits thee. Well done, well done, Jonathan. Thine arm is a strong and steady one, like unto the arm of Saul. Aye, he was a great king in his time. But age is upon him, and with his wits he hath also lost his strength. He knows not in what dire straits Israel is now. Look at me. I am compelled to hurl darts at mere images of the foe instead of bearing arms so as to wrest the sacred ark from those accursed Philistines. Despair not, Jonathan. I tell thee, the day will indeed come, and that day is not far removed either. The day will come when the people of Israel will be once more as they were. David, thou speakest as a prophet. Long have I ceased to hope any more. Thou art wrong, Jonathan. I have not spoken as a prophet, but as a man, as a man who has faith in divine justice and is ready to serve its cause. Even by main force, if tis needed. Aye, I would even use force. And this, how does it serve thee? This is the weapon of the prophet. I shall show thee. In thy hands rests the fate of Israel, Benjamin of Gaba. Saul trusts thy wisdom, and hence hath made the emissary. To redeem the authority of the king, the sacred ark must be returned to Jerusalem. Thou knowest the bitter unrest that now grips our land. I shall try not to deceive his faith. Even were it to cost us all of the gold in Israel, whatever is demanded by the Philistines, promise it. I will do as thou sayest, Abner. Listen carefully, Laza. The Israelites are ready to pay whatever thou wouldst, provided thou returnest their sacred ark. Abner, the captain of their host, who is my lord also, will send Benjamin of Gaba as emissary to thee. Uh, though this emissary is a wise man and speaks with a silver tongue, thou needst not listen. Tis my lord Abner who asks me to tell thee that thou shalt never hear him, O king. The madness of this Saul. He dares ask for the Ark. I shall take the Ark to Jerusalem only when I have slain old Saul. 
Send Goliath to the oasis of Goth to lie in ambush for the emissary. It is because of her that thou must always carry this with thee. Is she beautiful? Ay, Mikal. A man seeks an ideal in a woman's love. In my eyes, Egla was everything. She was true perfection. Her presence alone gladdened my heart and soul. So with such a memory as this, thou wilt not love another woman easily. I know not, Mikal. Before I thought this was true, but now, now I'm not certain. The murder of Benjamin of Gaba is indeed a hard blow, my king. Israel will long mourn him. He was one of Israel's greatest men. This mishap may stir up the feeling that we need a new king. A new king to restore the good name of a crown now scorned. But this peril could be easily avoided. And how? By making David thy emissary to the Philistine king Ashdod. David? Aye. David is the only man who has a chance of succeeding in this mission. He hath already given sufficient proof of his wisdom and cunning. Very well. Call him. Thou hast been helpful to my father, the king, and thou art helpful to me. I thank thee very much. I am no more the sad and lonely girl that I once was. No, I, I'm happy, but how long will it last? Mikal. It can last forever, if thou wilt. Mika. David, son of Jesse. King Saul would see thee. Why art thou in my quarters? Hast thou finished thy sweet tryst with that shepherd now? That shepherd is a counselor in the court, Mirab. One who turns to his prophet the evil spirit dwelling in the king. Our own father. What sayest thou? That he is trying to strengthen his place in court and is using thee to do it. How is it possible for thee to say such things? David is deserving of the esteem of our people and of his king. He is worthy. And worthy also to have a royal princess love him. Surely, Marab, worthy also to have a royal princess love him. Samuel is dead, and all 
Israel mourns. They have buried him in Ramah in his birthplace. But the Philistines are gathering themselves together, the Philistines. I've seen them. I've seen a host of them. Now I'm afraid and my heart is greatly troubled. When I inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered me not. Neither by prophecies, nor by dreams. I, the Philistines, gather their armies to battle. There goes out a champion from their camp named Goliath. Goliath of Gath. Goliath, whose height is six cubits and a span. He has a helmet of brass upon his head and is armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat. His five thousand shekels of brass. The staff of his spear is like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighs six hundred shekels of iron. And this man hath said, I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man. That we may fight together. confusion in my heart, David, but thou must have no fear. Tis the will of God that guideth thee. He will give thee strength so that thou mayest return to his chosen people, the sacred ark, the symbol of Israel's faith. Go thy way, David, son of Jesse, and tremble not in thine heart. Aye, Samuel. would be slain as was Benjamin of Gaba. I beg of thee, David, stay. Thou must not ask me to stay, Michal. Thou knowest that I must go. If thou didst not return, David, My lord, the great misfortune has befallen us. The Philistines are destroying everything. Tis the end of Israel. Now, well, return to Jerusalem and warn the court. The rest of you, follow me.
of Israel have done not to bring about this grievous event. The mercenaries of Ashdod have invaded our land. They have already destroyed our outermost cities and slaughtered our people. Ere the new moon rises, they will be at the very gates of Jerusalem. Jonathan, thou hast forgotten that Jerusalem is the heart of Israel, and that to leave it undefended might be a grievous error, for the enemy hath more than tenfold the total of all our forces. Remember that another defeat might well be the last one. No, Isaac. Fear. Accursed, shameful fear. Gaze on it. Tis here among ye. Tis fixed like a shameful mask on all your faces. Tis the same fear which prompted ye one day to betray my father Saul in another battle. You went mad with fear and fled. Cowards! But there is no one who can stay that host, Jonathan. This will be the end of us. No, not yet. The eyes of Ashdod will never come near enough to see the city of King Saul. It's for us to attack them! <laughs> Thou not stay, Jonathan, to defend Jerusalem. David, my place is here. We should attempt the impossible to stem the Philistines. But to suicide, behold them. The impossible is for God to perform. I shall go alone to Ashdod and speak with him as I did once with Saul. of Jesse, the shepherd David. <laughs> the renown of thy wisdom hath spread far and wide, but it is useless. Useless, stupid wisdom. So it is in thee that the Israelites trust. Thou art the one who calms down that old fool Saul. <coughs> what dost thou want? I tell thee in the name of the Lord to return to us the sacred ark and not to pass with thy host on the land of Israel. 
Thou, shepherd, thy insolence hath no limits. Thine Israelites have armed anew despite the peace which we made with them at Goth. And thou askest me to keep my host out of thy land? I do not ask thee to keep it out, but God wills it so. Such is God's law. Thou canst not destroy a people that is defeated. Such is God's law. My only God is gold. My only law is Goliath. Defeat Goliath, and I shall not destroy Israel. David, son of Jesse. Goliath!
What are you doing here? What is this trick? You're practicing here. And this. What is this? A target? A wineskin? Be rehearsing the murder of your king? No, O oh, king. The wineskin is below the throne. Uh -huh. This is proof that the man that we would kill is he who is thine enemy here in thy very court. I will be grateful to you. I but now get you gone. And hold your tongue so I shall have them cut out of your mouths. Away with you. Away. Return not to Israel till further order. Abner? Are you mad, Abner? I told you to plan this deed alone. It is a secret known only to us. A secret you understand. Israel. Abner! Abner! I beg of thee, listen to me. Do not do this. But tis now we must smite him, for it may well prove to be our last chance. The people favor David. They will rise. And father... My father has agreed. Thou knowest how he fears David. When we've finished with him, the people will bow down to the will of the king. No, do not do this. and trust the task to others. I must not, Mirab. I will not have it go wrong. I must do it myself. Listen, Abner. Let us forgo all this. Let us flee from here. Oh, do not do this. I beg of thee, do not do it. Let me go, Mirab. No. There's no time to lose. No. Let me go, I said. Abner! Abner. Oh. thou art free. Thou hast slain thy evil spirit. No. He hath slain Abner. He hath slain Abner. And the evil spirit in Saul is still living. It will perish only with his death. I know my destiny, Merab. I know also the destiny of my people Israel. Take him away. Long live David! Long live Saul, King of 
of Israel. I have sinned, David, I admit that. I want to do thee harm. But on this day thy soul is precious to mine eyes. Nicol, take thou my daughter, her will I give thee to wife. Be thou valiant for Israel to fight the Lord's battles. Blessed be thou my son David, for thou shalt do great things.